It's pretty free, pretty free feeling, you know. It's just, um, when I grew up, we could be as loud as we wanted to out there. Scream, yell, whistle. I mean, you're out in the ocean, you know, and, and that's kind of a free feeling. You want to just express yourself on that wave in that moment. So for me, it's freedom. For me, it's super satisfying. Name, Nathan, Nathan Acker. summer there's south swell so it's like coming in at the cliff and there's all these guys lined up underneath the cliff and I was like whoa what's what are these guys doing so it's it you know and they're right there there's about 15 feet down so you're just staring at them and all of a sudden here comes a couple waves and they start trickling in and these guys start riding waves and the waves breaking into the cliff at an angle so there's all this spray and and I was like are you kidding me like th this is even a possibility we told my mom, like, you're moving to Santa Cruz. And uh, literally, she did. Watching the older guys, and they would surf, and, you know, they were so aggressive, and it just made you want to, you know, get, push, keep pushing, keep pushing. and. Um, so that was really, that was really kind of the driving force. It was a love. I mean, it was a passion. It was like, it was like everything. <clears throat> and I remember right now, you know how the sun is going down earlier and after school, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, we were in soccer practice and all of a sudden it's getting dark and I was like, wait, we're not gonna get to surf after soccer practice. Like, so that was it, soccer was done. That was. Like, it was that easy. It was like, if you had to put it in front of me of, you know, here's a choice, it was clear. It was no question. So our house, we had a, uh, the one that we grew up in right there, we, we had an outdoor shower. We had two car garage with no car in it, all surfboards, all everything. And every single one of our friends kept their stuff there. We'd just eat and surf. And that was the place that everybody would come to. first sponsorship was Bill Long. And um, under the philosophy of wait until somebody comes and approaches you type thing, and <clears throat> they came and approached me, and you know about, and Santa Cruz became, started to become a kind of a hotbed at that time, where these sponsors are all down in, you know, Orange County, and they have huge facilities down there. So obviously if you lived in the Southern California region, you're gonna be noticed a lot quicker. But Santa Cruz was pretty far away, you know? And so it was, um, then all of a sudden, it was like these kids, man, these kids, like there's a group of kids. And so all the sponsors started jumping into Santa Cruz and wanting to like state claim into these young kids and, and um, have them represent the, the Northern California region. So it was pretty no-brainer to go, sure, you know, I'll put a sticker on the board and, and they'll give you boxes of clothes. It wasn't like, it wasn't the youngest. Probably 12, 13. To make it your profession, um, it took a while because because my amateur thing, I wanted to work hard and make sure that you went through all those checks and balances and you progressed and you didn't just flip a switch and be like, yeah, I want to be a pro surfer because nobody's going to pay you because you really haven't proven that you can, you know, master the, the amateur ranks. It's a grind, it's a, it's a long haul. And um, I mean, I had a lot of, 
I had a lot of friend support. Um, so we were on our own at a pretty young age. So even our sponsors were kind of like, whoa, if you guys make it through this, like, it's probably gonna be a miracle. Um, which in hindsight, I can see that, why they would think that, because you're 16 and you're basically on your own. It's much different it, down there as a, as a community. We're all friends, there's a lot of friends, there's a lot of parents, there's a lot of stuff, that, that support system that jumped in to help. And, um, but you kind of had to do it your own, you know, it was your own destiny, it's whatever choices now. You get free reign of, to mess up big time if you want to. Or to succeed, I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> That's the way I feel. Probably what got me through it is just fixating on the sport itself and the progression of the sport. And at that time, I was, like I said, I loved I loved skateboarding. Um, I loved that aspect of uh, riding a board, any kind of board, and surfing. And so it was only natural to once I started getting the the fundamentals really down and 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 really solid. Then I started taking it and going, well, if I have this much speed and I just carry that speed up a little bit higher and, and transition it a little bit above the lip, then you, all of a sudden you're breaking free and you're like getting above the lip and you're starting, which is, you know, like an, an error. I remember it super well because people were looking at it like, what in the, you know, is going on? It's like, this is like, wait, what? Like, and then all of us, all the kids on the west side, I have a really strong group of kids and, you know, that were very talented. We all started feeding off of, you know, doing stuff that was like progressive in that field. And Santa Cruz became really a hotbed for that and really known all over the planet that, wow, these kids are, are really like trying all this crazy stuff and, you know, really trying so hard to, to, to push the sport. And, I mean, my vision was that I wasn't going to be called just some burnout derelict surfer. Like that was a branded thing, you know, and I didn't want that to be how everybody looked at the sport because it's a, such a hard sport. There's 26 out. This is on inside of town. Santa Cruz Sentinel cover contest. Back in the day. Suits. This is on the wetsuits. Back side of This is on wetsuits in the studio. These are the movies. Some of the movies, all these different ones. Mental surfing, progression session, players, court heaven, I mean, there's a ton more, but this is for the shot. One, two, three, there's cover. Okay, cover yeah. Oh yeah, there's a, uh, Competition for this old rusty, old rusty uh, truck. I let my brother win. This is my surfboard shaper at the time, Xanadu. These are all the people that were invited to the air shows. 
and this is when they first started because of aerial, aerial surfing. So everybody was like, you know, it was kind of a kind of a thing. It's funny that I haven't seen this in years. You got it, kept it. That way, if the kids are like, "Yeah, my dad, you didn't do that." Actually, that's why I kept it because it's almost kind of unbelievable. This just shows like all the work. There's so much hard work that goes into this to get all this stuff. Surfer magazine, like spread for the California edition. But you know, backside nose blunt. Come on, man. Who's doing that? Pressure for a professional and the professional side is probably where it started to get a little bit not as fun. You know, you're, you're accepting money to do this now, which in any profession or any art form, if they're paying you to do it, they own you. <laughs> you know, that's the reality of it. And so if you really want to control your art and do what you want to do, then you can't accept money for that, right? Because then you don't have sole control. Whereas they kind of mold you into what they need. Uh, marketing, um, I mean, the whole thing with professional surfing, it's not just competition, you know? You go out, you're their brand, you're their name, you only wear their logo, you have to show up for their press events, you have to autograph signings, you have, a lot of different pressures that ha come with that. Yeah, you know, I had to do everything to try to keep my, my ship rolling. It got really dicey at the end just because of the, the sponsorships and the different deals and the way that surfing was stagnating. I didn't feel like there was a progression period. I feel like I was just in this big lull and um, I didn't want to be the guy that was just wanted, you know, oh, well, you're not going to pay me anymore to surf, so I'm going to get free product and I'm going to feel great about it. It's like, no way. Like, I paid my dues. I did my thing. It didn't go to the Olympics. It wasn't a legit sport at that time in 1999. It still wasn't. Um, so I feel like, you know, I was like, well, I'm just treading water. And I um, was just about ready to turn 30. was going to have my first child. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, fo the focus wasn't so much of me, it was about, you know, how am I going to create this family. I packed up every single thing. I had a conversation with Belvong. I told him, I'm done. I'm glad I got to live that life. And I always say, you know, I retired when I was a kid and lived this great fantasy life of um, getting able to travel and do all these things and just wake up and go surfing every day and shoot photos and videos and have all these parts and all this stuff and, and do well in competitions and push the sport that I loved into a place, you know, help, help that whole movement. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer, you know, everything happens for a reason. I did great, and the decision to stop, I feel good about as well, you know. It's, it, it made me who I am now, and I take everything, every, every situation, every day, and I can, I can use that in my daily life now, you know, even though I'm not, you know, 100 miles away from the ocean, but it doesn't matter, it's like kind of, it's, it's my college was traveling and figuring things out, and that's a good college to go to. And I can go anywhere in the world and adapt to anything in any situation. And I can go corporate CEOs and their house and their Christmas parties, and I can go to the janitor of Granite Bay High and say what's up and high five them. I mean, it's it's we're all you know people, and you you respect everybody, and that's how it works. We're all together.